Hey, this is a Richard Sherman podcast brought to you by Super Draft Fantasy, the official fantasy partner of Caesar Rewards. To all my PFF listeners, it's time to get hooked up when you play. Get a $10 bonus when you deposit 10 by using the code PFF at registration. Just download Super Draft and start playing games like Super 15. Get your hands on some cash prizes, Caesar Rewards credits, and more. We're even hooking you up with free PFF Elite subscription when you sign up. Just download the Super Draft app on Apple or Play Store. Use the code PFF when you create an account, deposit $10, and get a free PFF Elite subscription. The offer is only eligible for new accounts. Sorry, everybody who's already subscribed, but new accounts, it's exciting. Super Draft paid fantasy contests are available in 34 states. Must be 18 or older to play. Paid contests in most states. Visit superdraft.io for all eligibility restrictions. Well, I'm the best corner in the game. Don't you ever talk about me. Picked off. It is Richard Sherman. It's picked off by Sherman. Now, buckle up. Here he goes. And it is intercepted by Richard Sherman. Broken up. Picked off. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Richard Sherman podcast with my guy, Mitch Eisenstein. We're going to have Cliff Averill on a little later. Obviously, it's going to be amazing. Got a lot to talk about. All right, Mitchell, what's up? All right. So, Rich, we have a, a fresh week. It is it is a, a beautiful Friday. And uh, right before NFC and AFC championship games, I was hoping that you guys would be would be busy preparing for for the game this week but uh let's take a look back i mean what what really happened last week it was uh i was watching the game and i think like a lot of other people everyone thought oh, this is tom brady this is so tom brady i said it probably 10 times this is so tom brady the ball gets snapped over uh matt stafford's head this is so tom brady and then it wasn't so tom brady like it just talked to me. What was going through your mind on the sideline there? Like, what was the team's, I guess, what was the team's uh, thought process down the stretch of that game? Well, the guys just kept battling. You know, at the end of the day, that's all it's about. You know, guys fought to the very end, uh, didn't make enough plays at the end to get it done. Uh, that's pretty much all it came down to. They they, they kept alive, you know, forced, forced turnovers when, when they were needed, um, forced Cam Akers to fumble a few times, and, and, and literally kept themselves in the game uh, until the end, gave themselves a chance uh, last to the last second, and, and unfortunately gave up a big play at the end. Now let's look ahead to next week, and obviously fresh off the Rams, you've had a ton of experience playing in the NFC West, your most 95% of your career, right? Um, I know you have a vested interest in the 49ers. You've called it week after week. You were banging the drum of the 49ers going into the playoffs saying, they're going to knock off the Cowboys. They're going to knock off the Green Bay Packers. They have beat the Rams the last six times. Tell me why they won't win this game. I can't tell you why they won't win this game because they should have lost the last time they played. And, and if I'm the Rams, I'm not feeling great because we should have beat them the last time. You had them 17 to three. You're, you were undefeated when leading at the half, especially leading by three scores at the half. Um, and at the end of the day, they, they play better than them. And they played without their starting left tackle, who's an all-pro um, offensive player of the year candidate, did not even play in the game. They played with, with um, Dante Johnson, who, who was obviously known for, you know, his role in, against da Devontae Adams last week. Everybody was worried um, that the rookie, uh, Ambry, was out and that Dante had to play, but he played a freaking magnificent game and did his part to help his team win the ball game. They held A-Rod and Devontae to 10, 10 points, and he had to play safety in the game against the Rams last time. k Williams didn't play, so they had a nickel that they brought off a practice squad to play in that game, and these are the things that people don't understand. Fred Warner got banged up. Like, it was a lot of stuff that happened in that game that, that people don't appreciate um, that are going to be different this time around. I believe Trent Williams will play. Um, <clears throat> And obviously, I don't think they'll they'll go down early on. And the Rams obviously aren't a great finishing team. They gave up 27 unanswered last week, or 24 unanswered against against us, Tampa Bay, and uh, and they gave up a lot of points after being up 17 to three against the Niners. So I think it's going to be a shootout. But I still got the Niners going to the Super Bowl. What do you think the score is going to be? <clears throat> 
the Niners defense plays the way they've been playing, and they have a great feel for Cup and those boys. Uh, they rattle Matt Stafford because Armstead's gotten hot. They found ways to to to, to isolate Bosa, uh, and if they double and triple team Bosa, then he gets hot. Uh, I think it's uh, 27, 27, 17, probably is what. Right wow. Double digit victory, not even close. I, Richard, I respect that call. I, you've been, like I said, you've been right the last two times. I'm, I'm done doubting you, unless it's with fantasy football, which brings me to the next game Chiefs Bengals. Richard is hot and heavy on the Cincinnati Bengals team. You know, we do the Super 15 every week. If you guys listen to the full episode, he picked literally the entire Cincinnati Bengals core minus Joe Mixon. Um, who do you like in this game? I like Cincinnati. Um, and 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 obviously the the cliche pick is to just go with Kansas City and think Mahomes is going to beat them. They're they're inexperienced. They haven't been there before. We're in Kansas City. It's a cold game. It's a bunch of young guys, rookie receiver who who's having an All Pro Pro Bowl season. Um, you got a bunch of unknowns at receiver, but they're a really talented core. A ton of unknowns on the defensive side of the football. Uh, it would, you, you would, it would seem one-sided and very lopsided like Kansas City should walk off, but then you watch the game that they played earlier in the year and Joe Burrow played his butt off and he shredded that defense. He shredded that defense. Tyron Matthew didn't get to play in the last game. Who knows if he's going to play in this game? And if he does not play, their defense looks a whole lot different than it does without their, with, with their all pro safety. I think if Joe Burrow gets comfortable, he got hit nine times in the game against Tennessee nine, he got sacked nine times and it, he kept weathering the storm. He kept standing up, kept stepping up, kept stepping up, kept stepping up. And if nine sacks is going to rattle the kid, I'm not going to, I'm going to not going to expect the, the Kansas city noise or anything else to rattle him. We saw they were practicing um, with the, you know, fake crowd noise. Is that something you guys didn't in, in throughout your career at any time? Yeah. Well, I mean, we did it for home. No, I was going to say the yeah, 12s are a rambunctious group. Um, right, right, right. What's it like playing at Arrowhead? Have you played there before? Is the crowd that much different, or would you take the 12s over top of them? I mean, it's not that much different. I, I, I'd probably take the 12s just because I'm I'm so used to having it. It's more they're closer to you. They feel closer to you. Um, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be loud. But uh, the kid also played in the SEC, and you know, if those stadiums aren't loud, as you know, I haven't been there. I haven't played in them. But from what I hear, it's a hundred thousand of loud fans screaming their tails off and. You know, I don't think that'll make a biggest difference. And if he goes up 17, nothing, 14, nothing, then I don't think the crowd becomes a factor at all. Now, if he keeps them in the game and it's a close game in a battle, you know, who knows, but at the end of the day, it'll come down to playmakers making plays. Richard, the arrowhead was jumping last week. Uh, we saw an absolute classic, uh, probably one of the best, if not the best uh, games and finishes, um, certainly in a long time, but there's a lot of complaints after the game about the overtime uh, rules. You know, these teams were going back and forth scoring at will. And it seemed that whoever finished with the ball last was going to win that game. And sure enough, the chiefs won the coin, hot, coin toss and the rest is history. Do you think it's time for the NFL to make some changes uh, with their overtime rules? I mean, it, it, it's always time for the NFL to make changes and they never make changes until it's overdue. Um, so <clears throat> I don't know if they will. I doubt they will, but who knows? They definitely need, should, should let both teams get it, get a chance to score. If they get both chance teams, teams both chance, like if team scores a touchdown and the next team gets a chance to go down to score and they don't score, the game's over. You know, that'd be cool. That'd be fine. People be fine with that rule. But I, I think Albert Breer or somebody tweeted out that the team that gets the ball first is seven and one or right. seven and <clears throat> seven and ten, seven and one, something like that in overtime games. Um, and was it seven and one? It might have been nine and one. In seven of those games, the other team didn't even get the football. And right. so, I mean, it's unfair, especially to a quarterback like Josh Allen, who's playing the game of his life and, and probably goes down and scores and gives his team a chance to win the ball game. But, you know, you're letting it come down to a coin flip, and that's very NFL of us. Richard, I mean, you've played in this league a long time. I, I know you're addicted to winning. I mean, that's what drives you. I'm sure that's what drives all your teammates and competitors as well. Oh. Why wouldn't you guys just play the full quarter and see who won? Or why wouldn't you go? What's the, the harm in adopting the, the college rules? I mean, do you, what is 
preventing the NFL from making these changes. It seems their rule is so archaic. It's been so out of date for decades. It's made no sense to anyone. Why is it the way it is? You got to think this is a game that, that measures 10 yards with a stick and a chain. Like <laughs> that should tell you everything you need to know about the NFL. Like there's all this technology in the world and you could literally put a chip in the football to tell you where it is on the field and whether the first down is the first down or not, but they still use subjective measurements of human beings grabbing the football, putting it where they think it should go and a, a stick and chain to measure first downs to determine all of this. And so you got to think they're never going to adopt or adjust until the fans make them adjust. And if the fans don't make them adjust, they're not going to change. Well, Richard, I, I want there to be a change as a, as a fan. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's, it's time. These guys are, you have Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes going at it to go to the AFC championship game. And it's literally decide, decided by a coin flip. I'll rest, I'll rest there. But Richard, we, we've got a couple other major topics that popped up this week, uh, starting with Nathaniel Hackett getting hired by the Green Bay Packers. Um, you know, Aaron Rodgers was quoted last offseason that he did not want Nathaniel Hackett to go anywhere unless Aaron Rodgers went somewhere. Do you think this opens the door? Do you think it's more likely than not that Aaron Rodgers is no longer with the Green Bay Packers? And do you think he's going to head to Denver? I have no idea. I have no idea about the Aaron Rodgers stuff. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't play for the Green Bay Packers anymore if I was him, but uh, I'm not him. And I can't call that one. I got nothing. I mean, it's one of those situations that can go either way. And I doubt he'd want to go into the AFC West with, with the Chargers doing what they're doing and, and Kansas City being in that conference. And, um, you know, he, he'd have three three pretty good young quarterbacks, two two really, really good young quarterbacks. Derek Carr hits, can really get hot at times and give you problems. And, you know, is that really where you want to go sign up? Right. And he's got three layup line teams that he's going against in the NFC North every year. So right. that is a, that is a very good point. Yeah, and then you got two teams in the NFC North that are replacing their head coaches. Right. As we speak. So. Right. I mean, this opens the door for one team, Rich in the NFC North, one team, Detroit, the Detroit lions, dude. Detroit. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, maybe at some, Maybe at yeah. some point in my life they'll win a playoff game, eh? I think they'll. I think they'll really turn it around. I think they'll at least go over 500 next year. I think they have. They they got confident at the end. I think their coach found a style that they can play and have fun. Their players. It shows. It, it gets to expose the best parts of their players. And and, and who knows, Detroit? You know, yeah. they may they may win the North next year. It's ah. a it goes. It, it's anybody's guess. I appreciate that, Rich. That is that is huge. Um, and then finally, Richard, we saw Big Ben retire this week. Uh, obviously, he's had a storied career, 18 seasons, multiple Super Bowls. Um, wh what are your memories of him? What stands out most about Big Ben to you? Well, he's been consistent. You know, they talk about it. I don't think he's ever started for them and not had a winning season. Uh, <clears throat> he's been great. He's fought, fought through many injuries. Uh, he's played the game his way, and he's made – Pittsburgh formidable for a number of years. And I think he'll, he'll, he'll get in the hall of fame first ballot and uh, he, he'll deserve it. Well, Rich, we're going to welcome on your former teammate, uh, fellow Super Bowl champion, Cliff Averill for anyone watching on YouTube or on video, you'll notice a Cliff Averill Jersey right here. Um, Richard, I know you guys have a lot of memories together and I know you're excited for this one. I'll let you sign us off. Well, I appreciate you, Mitchell, and I appreciate Cliff coming on. I can't wait to have this conversation. Stay tuned. Hey, this is a Richard Sherman podcast brought to you by Super Draft Fantasy, the official fantasy partner of Caesar Rewards. To all my PFF listeners, it's time to get hooked up when you play. Get a $10 bonus when you deposit 10 by using the code PFF at registration. Just download Super Draft and start playing games like Super 15. Get your hands on some cash prizes, Caesar Rewards credits, and more. We're even hooking you up with free PFF Elite subscription when you sign up. Just download the Super Draft app on Apple or Play Store. Use the code PFF when you create an account, deposit $10, and get a free PFF Elite subscription. The offer is only eligible for new accounts. Sorry, everybody who's already subscribed, but new accounts, it's exciting. 
Super Draft Paid Fantasy Contests are available in 34 states, must be 18 or older to play. Paid contests in most states. Visit superdraft.io for all eligibility restrictions. Let me get to you guys first with the Super Draft Super 15 Contest. Again, I don't know what's going on with the rules. I don't know what's happening. I need to get to the point counter because obviously Mitch has paid the right people in the right places. And- it did. Richard, R- Richard, you put up 22 points last week. I, I, I and Patrick Mahomes put up 40 alone, you know? I... Mitchell. I mean, I love you, but God bless it. I thought you were an insider here. You know, I, I thought I was competing against an insider and I'm starting to think I might be the insider. I feel cheated. I feel cheated and it's hacked. And uh, they're probably happening from the same people. I don't know. But I'm going to make my picks this week because, because I'm tired of this. And I'm not going to get emotional. I'm just going to make my picks. Respect that. I'm going to get them a little emotional. Um... I'm going to go with, I'm going all out on Cincinnati. Joe Burrow, my $5 pick. I'm going Jamar Chase with my $4 pick. I am I am going T. Higgins with my $3 pick. I am going, <sighs> not going Tyler Boyd. I'm not, I'm not going Tyler Boyd. I am not going Tyler Boyd. I'm not. I'm Tyler Boyd with my $2 pick. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going CJ Uzama with my one dude. Dollar. I, I, freaking, I, I freaking love it, man. Now we're talking. I want you to win. Can I just not fill out the lineup this week? <laughs> dude, that I love it. That's a heck of a strategy right there. Um, I, I guess, you know, I'll stay away from Cincinnati uh, and let you have them. I, I'm going to start it off with Patty Mahomes. I mean, the dude's a rock star. Week in, week out, this is his time of the season where, you know, he just throws for 200 yards in the last two minutes in OT of the game, and I think I would have beat you in those last two minutes alone with his points he put up last week. Okay, Mitchell, okay, that's enough. (laughs) Petty Mahomes. Then I'm going to go with, uh, oh, goodness, Rich. I'm going to go with with the combo here, Tyreek Hill. Um, Yeah, man, yet again, he kind of had a ho-hum week until the last two minutes of the game and then just pops off for 150 and a tutty. So we're going to go with uh, Tyreek Hill there. And then, uh, shoot, I'm going to go Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Let's go Chiefs, baby. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm going to mix it up a little bit, though. Um, I'm going to go Cam Akers from the Rams. Got to have some disparity there. He's been he's been coming back to health and giving them. Quite frankly, I think you know that that added punch to the run game. And then we're going to go with uh, Tyler Higby. So three Chiefs, two Rams. <sighs> Can Richard outscore twenty two points this week? Is the Cincinnati. question. Cincinnati. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who they? I think is what they say. You know? Yeah. Who they need to score me? They not points. they not you. I'll tell you that much, Rich. Right. They better score me some points. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that and that is it, folks. Another loss for Richard on the week takes me to double digit wins on the whoa, season. Whoa, whoa, Cincinnati fans, Cincinnati team. You heard Mitchell. Don't let him be right. Don't don't let him be right. But you guys can play as well using the code PFF at registration. No credit card required. You know, no strings attached. Just get in where you fit in. We'll see you then. All right, what are we talking about, man? Let's jump into this. What we got going on? <laughs> We're going to do this all day. Um, well, sure, let's talk about these playoff games. We got your boy Matthew Stafford in the NFC Championship for the first time. Uh, wanting two playoff games, which is crazy. Um how, how 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 are you seeing him different from the dude that was in Detroit? You know, it's interesting seeing Matt have so much success now. But if you look at his numbers, he's been, I mean, he's been launching the ball, right? He, he I mean, he, I, I think he can throw with the best of them. But it's truly one of those situations where, you know, based on the market that you're in, based on the organization that you play for, you know, you can be great as you want to be, but if they don't surround you, with the the right talent. And that also shows that, you know, football is the ultimate team sport. They don't surround you with the the right folks. You know, he had Megatron. Now he got some other weapons and different things like that, but collectively he's never had a solid team. So it's, it's pretty cool to see him getting the success that he he's getting right now. Um, he's always 
threw for a lot of yards, but now he's actually winning and actually winning in the playoffs <laughs> for the first time in his career. I think it's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool to watch him, his growth and him being able to at least, you know, finish with a bang as he gets towards the end of his career. It is crazy. And what you, what you think, you know, I'm going to go predictions, you know, the easy stuff for these matchups, you know, in the AFC, you got Pat Mahomes in it again for the third year, what, fourth year straight, something yeah, like that. That's right. Um, then you got, you got the young kid Burroughs in it and in, in Cincinnati, you know, living a dream and you got <laughs> the NFC West matchup, you know, that's third time running. So who you got? Man, you know, that NFC, NFC West been tough since, since we was, you know, crushing it out here. Um, and, and it's, it's crazy to keep seeing, you know, NFC teams back in the situation, NFC West teams back in the situation, but man, it's, it's crazy. Cause so, so with LA and, and um, San Fran, I mean, I think what uh, uh, San Fran's, they swept them the last two or three years or something like that. Yeah. They beat so, them six straight. So it's one of those situations where you're like, will the ties change a little bit? You know what I mean? Um, LA's playing some really good football. So they, I guess to answer your question, I would go with, I'm gonna go with San Fran just based on the defense. All right. Well, I, let me take that back. Actually. Um, that's tough. I'll go with LA based on the defense. I, obviously, uh, AD, you know, Vaughn, you talk about, um, you know, uh, Ramsey and those boys, they all have been playing well, but then our offense is, is, is killing stuff too. So I'll go LA and then I'll go, it's hard to go against KC right now, honestly, just even how they, they pulled that last game off to, to be able to pull that dub. Uh, I, I see those two guys playing in, in the, in the play, uh, in the Super Bowl. Okay. 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 I see. I, I can see that. I, I think, I think the Rams have struggled with Kyle's um, play calling, and I think uh, last game the Rams didn't beat them when they were when they were down their left tackle and down their starting corners. Uh, they went in there with with a guy they had just raised off the practice squad as a nickel. They moved the corner to safety and played half the game and still was able to beat them. Uh, so if Trent Williams plays in that game, I think that gives them a big boost. Um, I think I, I I just don't think Rams are that good good of a team, and I don't you know we just uh, we just saw them in Tampa Bay, and uh, it wasn't really all that impressive. We just brought too much pressure and got too aggressive. You know I'm you know we come from the the scheme where you don't need to bring pressure, rush four and and deal with them, and that's what San Francisco does incredibly well. They rush four and they cover them up back there, and their four can get there. Their D line has gotten as hot as as fish grease. Uh, Eric Armstead is having the playoffs of his life. He just had two and a half. I think he had two and a half against the Rams the last time mm -hmm. uh, they played. And so he has something to deal with. He's going to be something to deal with. Bosa is going to be something to deal with. Willis has been coming on strong, obviously um, the Rams D line, but the Rams D line is going to have to stop the run. They're going to stop Debo Samuels. They're getting real creative with Trent Williams. It's, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. But now, okay. But now it say, say the, here's a, here's a question though. Say, LA is able to get up a little bit on them. Can Jimmy G make things happen? See, that question was answered for you the last time they played. I mean, the Rams, that's why the Rams don't really have an excuse. That's why they're going to have a hard time, like understanding how they can beat these boys because they were up 17 to three. Mm -hmm. I have time. They were up. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like they were down. Mm -hmm. And then their offense sputters as it always does just like it did against us. They, they were up 27 and three and then it sputtered and, and it now it's tied in. And, yeah. and if you can't, if you can't consistently hold leads, they've only lost one game that they were leading at the half. And it was the game they lost in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And so, so if you keep feeling like, Hey, you shot your wide, you shot your best shot and we're beating them. And that wasn't enough. So if you don't get a lead on them and Debo starts running ball down your throat, you're going to see their confidence drop. You're going to see they they're going to start to be like, damn, here Fantasy it come again. And all that. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Okay. I can see that. I could definitely see that. Now, how, how, what's, your, what's your thoughts on the AFC then? Well, I just, you know, it, it, it seems like no matter how, how defeated they are, they find a way to come back to Kansas city. So I got to go with Cincinnati. I, I just refuse to go with Kansas city just because they keep doing it. But um, Cincinnati just doesn't like have the any folks that was hating on us. Huh? You sound like the folks that was hating on us. Just be hating on us. Well, we only went to two. They, they going on four or something like that. That's fair. That's that. Well, I'm, more so, I'm more so saying because it's not just the win. Like it's not just the fact that they're going obviously to 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 the AFC Championship, but more along the lines of having success, right? Because everybody hates Tom Brady because he has success. 
You know what I mean? Whether it's Super Bowls or not, but like just winning ball games consistently, being one of the top team, being one of the top teams in the in the in the in the regular season doesn't really mean anything when you go into playoffs. But they hate you going into it. You know what I'm saying? They they dislike you based on that. Um, and and I, I just find that intriguing because even when you talk about Tom, you talk about some of these other guys like. Y'all, you like Tom, you're watching greatness at its finest. Like, why would you hate on that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. It, mine is more from the regular season. They, they lost to him. They lost to Cincinnati. Cincinnati yeah. scored 34 points on them. And Tyron Matthew didn't play last week. If he don't play this week, they went home. And, mm. uh, you know, these three receivers that Cincinnati has have gotten hot. Everybody's like, man, their old line sucks. They got that boy got sacked, sacked nine times and Ooh, did not yeah. fold. Yeah. And did not fold. They hit him up. They hit him down. They hit him left. They hit him right. And he did not fold. He kept throwing it, kept slanging it. Something to be said about that. Their defense is opportunistic. They have a great safety. Uh, they get pressure with the front four. They have a lot of underrated, unknown guys that play at a high level for them. That's fair. That's fair. No, that's fair. Uh, I mean, I, it's going to be great football uh, at the end of the day. I mean, even if you think about just – well, here I know this is your 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 interview, but um, <laughs> go for it, Clifford. La, but la, like last week, for example, um, in in probably I don't know last five to seven years, I don't think there's been a I don't think I've seen that many great games collectively. I mean, all the games, obviously, uh, your, your your squad was playing in one of them, but collectively, man, that was some, that was just some great football. Yeah, it was historic. They said that was the first time in a, in a playoff weekend that every game came down to the last possession of the game. It was crazy. And, uh, yeah, yeah. They all came down to the, to the last score of the game, uh, last possession. And, uh, it's, it's incredible. It's been some incredible football. I still think there's going to need to be tweaks to the rules because there's still, every game is running into situations where it's too subjective. You know, it's not letting the game talk. It's too, too subjective. It's guys, emotions or the referees emotions are, you know, that are getting involved and you can't have that, especially with, gambling and all that going on. People are starting to think it's some kind of conspiracy. It's not, mm -hmm. you can't, you can't, you can't fix a football game. I don't give a damn. I mean, I guess the rest can try, but it's hard. Like, it's hard. It, it's damn hard without I making it look. It time. It's like if, if there was one person on the team that <laughs> could try to fix a game or throw a game, should I say the only person I think is, is, is a quarterback besides that. It, I don't care what you do. Right. It, it'd be the quarterback and the refs. That's the only That's people it. that can really control right. it. The refs can give a, 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 a long pass interference call or something, you know, that puts them in scoring range and yada, yada, yada. But um, I think it's, I think it's interesting, but you have had quite the career and played with these guys and you play the second half of your career. The only guy to go on 16 and then win a Super Bowl. you know, one of them crazy stats. What do you think is the perfect off season for Seattle to get back to where they want to be? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things that gotta, that, 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 that needs to, uh, to happen. I think, um, you gotta, you gotta find your identity, man. What is your identity going to be? You know, when, when we was playing at, at lights out and like, we knew what, we knew what the game plan was every week. Wasn't no question. It wasn't changing every week, right? We was going to play our same coverage. We was going to play our same front on defense and the team was going to rely on us to, to shut things down. And we we're going to run the mess out of the rock. That was, that was just our identity. Now I'm not necessarily saying, I'm not necessarily saying they need to get back to that, but they need to figure out what it's going to be. You know what I mean? If they're going to be a, if they're going to be uh, uh, you know, they're going to throw the ball 50 times, which I don't know if that's necessarily the, the best situation. Uh, stick to that. But they changed. I felt like they changed too much throughout the season and, and, and they didn't know who they were going into the season. So to answer your question, I think the defense needs to get a little bit more stout, uh, figure out what you're going to run on defense, right? Can't have your pass rushers dropping back into coverage every other third down. Like that would, that would piss me off if I was on the D line. Right. Um, figuring that piece out, figuring out what you're going to be great at. Pick one thing and what you're going to be great at. And let's, let's get to that right on defense. Um, you got to keep Bobby around. I think the, the, the dumbest thing they can do is, is try to get rid of somebody like that. You know, being the quarterback of the defense, being all pro, all the stats, of course, but he knows what it takes to win. He knows what championship football looks like. He knows what elite defenses look like. He's been a part of it, right? So being able to 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 keep somebody like that in your locker room, I think is huge, but they got to get some people up front and they got to get some help on uh, at corner. Um, you know, and th those two things, as we both know, go hand in hand. 
You know, your rush ain't going to get there if you ain't got no good coverage guys. And if your guys can't cover, you ain't going to get to the rush ain't going to get there. So uh, I think those two things go hand in hand and they got to figure that piece out on, on defense. On the offense, I think they got all the weapons. Of course, the talk is always, uh, you know, you know, some people have their issues with Russ or whatever, but the talk is always the offensive line or something like that. But they got Rashard Penny. They got to find a way to keep him. I mean, he crushed it the last five, uh, five or six games. Um, I, I don't know if you give him a long-term deal per se, but you gonna have to give him some kind of money to stay, stick around. I don't know what they're going to do with Carson. Carson is, um, I think they said his neck injury is kind of, kind of significant, almost similar to mine. And, and at that position, you can't, can't mess around with that. So you got to get a running game and then you got some weapons on the outside. So, so I, I would say those are some of the things that you need to just correct. Obviously style up the, 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 the O line Russ, hopefully can bounce back and, and, you know, get just find ways to get better and, and continue to keep elevating. I think, I, I think at the end of the day, you know, and Seattle fans are going to hate to hear this because it's just, they hate to accountability these days, but they're probably going to get rid of Bobby. And once you do that, that's, that's it. That's Downhill. it. That's yeah. it. That's it. You're in rebuild. I don't care if Russell's there or not there. You're in rebuild mode. If Bobby Wagner is not there. Um, and people are like, man, we got to, you know, because you either, you either die the hero yeah. or you live long enough to become the villain. Mm. And everybody's learning that the hard way. Russell's learning that mm. you either leave the hero or you li- stay long enough to become the villain. Man. Cause no matter what these fans, these fans had never won anything before we got here. Yeah. They had never won anything. They, 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 they went to the super bowl in, in 06 and we're happy to be there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that was their biggest claim. And then, we get there, we win a Super Bowl, we spoil them with with historic defense, and then all of a sudden that's their expectation. Now their expectation oh, yeah. is is oh we're going to the Super Bowl every year. Like y'all have only been to to three in the history of your your, your organization. Yeah. Now you go now you going every year. No, but you can't appreciate that because now people are saying let's get rid of Bobby. He costs too much money. So there is no guarantee you're going to keep them. There's no guarantee Bobby stays. And when people start to talk like that and then you get what you wanted, cause they were talking about get rid of us. And they were like, we got replacements. We got LOB 2.0. And yeah. then you got rid of us. And then you realize you don't, you realize yeah. we were once in a generation type talent and you should have kept it and appreciated when you had it. So I think the identity of a Pete Carroll and a championship team, as it always has been is run the ball, limit the limit, the turnovers, play solid defense. The best defense is a good run game. You, you run the clock, you, you spend less time on the field, you get stops when you need them. That's what they were doing at the end. That's what their formula was. That's what, how they won those games at the end. That's how they beat Arizona. Rashad Penny was, I forget, I can't name him exactly, but I think his rushing stats were like 190, 179, yeah, 160, yeah. you know, in the last couple of games. And of course they won those games. Yeah. And people were like, let Russell, let Russ cook, let Russ cook. You did not win a Super Bowl letting Russ cook. You have not, you have not, you have not been anywhere close to a Super Bowl letting Russ cook. You have not, you will not be close to a Super Bowl if you let him throw it 30, 40 times a game, because not only are you, you're not, you're stopping the clock. Yeah. So your defense, your time of possession, your, 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 your propensity to turn the ball over is going to increase. Like yeah. you, your defense is going to be out there longer. So they're going to be more tired. They're not going to be as effective. And until you, unless you got some hall of fame, like all pro players, that's not going to, they're not going to be able to stand up. You're going to be a shootout. Yeah, I, I feel I feel that it's not sustainable from from that perspective, and I agree. Um, as far as for like the city in general, you know, whether they're like, oh, we need to get rid or get rid of Bobby. Hell, honestly, even the the story of getting rid of Pete or uh, Russ to me, I, I find to be crazy. But it also shows why fans are fans in a, in a sense of like Seattle has gotten spoiled. In, a, in, in, in their expectations of the team, right? We had a nice long run of winning, being on top, based on what you just said, you know, uh, great defense and, and, and running the ball. But now it's like, like you said, the expectation is to win all the time. The expectation is, is to be in the Super Bowl every other year. And I think that's unfair because, one, it just doesn't happen. Two, we had, like, caught lightning in a bottle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, whether you talk about the draft picks with you, Earl, Cam, all these different things, right? But also even think about this, right? Uh, I was talking to Mike B about this, Mike Bennett uh, about this, and we were talking about it's crazy because Mike and I were, were, were the top two free agents our year. All right. When have you ever seen the top two free agents go to the same team? 
I've never seen it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it was lightning in a bottle. Of course, you know, we got our reasons for why we felt like it happened. I'm, and I'm grateful for why, uh, how it happened as far as for us being able to be a part of something so special, but you know, like, the city has gotten spoiled. They have gotten spoiled. And, and the notion of getting rid of some guys after they've gone on a, on 11 straight years, uh, 11 years straight of, of having a winning season. And you have one bad season. All of a sudden it's like, Oh, we need to get rid of everybody. We need, we need to go over here. We need to do that. And it's like, the grass is not green on the other side. Trust and, me. And, 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 and they know that. And that's, what's crazy. They've forgotten it somehow. And that's what they don't understand. They're like, they're like, we got to get rid of these guys. They're past their prime. It's like, even if Bobby is past his prime, He's better his than three 90. years past his prime. He's better than everybody you getting after him. He's <laughs> better than every he's single body. He's, he's better than 85% of the, the middle linebackers in the league right now. Straight up. Straight like, up. And, and that's what they don't understand. They're like, oh, well, he's not in his prime. Like, we're, we got to draft another all pro player. How many have you drafted? There hasn't been another all pro corner since I left. No. Like, that, you know what I mean? They, they, they've had all pro and pro bowl safety, but I mean, it, it, ain't, it ain't the same as what they used to. Yeah, because you get in the playoffs. They've won one playoff game since 2017. Like you got to start to look internally at that point. Like you got to stop. The fans got to stop like having these weird expectations where you're thinking, oh, this is just easy. Like you have had like that ring of honor is going to be filled with players from those teams. Yeah. 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 And to think that you can just replace and go on and think, oh, the Super Bowl should still be the expectation. No, it should not. You should lower your expectation substantially. Not, not just that, though. If if change comes, guess what? Oh, my God. Old stuff has to happen in order for you to get back to the top. Oh so are God. you really ready for that? <laughs> you know oh, my God. You talk about the rebuild. They get rid of Pete Carroll. Good luck. I don't you're give a really? good, good luck. Good luck. Because th then you're going to be sitting there. Like, everything is an excuse. Like, They've been saying it's the offensive coordinator since Bevel was there. Mm -hmm. And they've had two other offensive coordinators. One offensive coordinator went 12 and four, and they still wanted him fired <laughs> because it's always somebody else. Yeah. You go 12 and that. four and have one of the top offenses and the quarterback up for MVP consideration, and they talking about fire you because you didn't win the Super Bowl. <laughs> it, it, it's the expectations are unreal. Um, and, and like I said, the grass is not green on. And then here's the other thing, too, is like, if you ask the Detroits of the world, the, the Clevelands of the world, uh, Miami the last few years, Jacksonville, would they not have loved to have that last 10-year, 11, 12-year run that we just had, that the Seahawks have just had? And one bad season? They haven't had one good season in 12 years almost, right? Right. <laughs> so it's like, what, like, what are we talking about? And, and, and I understand the media got to say what they got to say, and, and a lot of people follow that stuff, but it's just, it's just unreal watching it. One, being, have, being a part of it, but then also, like you said, when, when I came on, like I've been on teams that were 0-16. You know what I'm saying? I've been – like there's a big difference in the two situations. And like Detroit can't get out of their own way for whatever reason, right? You think they wouldn't take the type of type of run that the Seattle, uh, Seahawks have had over the last 12 years? Come on, man. No question. Like, I mean, you talk about Cincinnati. Cincinnati hadn't won a playoff game in 31 years. <laughs> and now they are, they are be beside themselves. Buffalo yeah. lost yeah. four Super Bowls. Like, mm -hmm. and, and, and hadn't been nowhere close to sniffing it. Now they got a great quarterback, a top, top five, top 10 quarterback, a great defense, a lot of talent. Um, Gabriel Davis came on freaking fantastically is showing, looking like a bright star out there. And you would think that a franchise and, and it, they had been amazing. You know, it was almost like they were better before you, you get to Super Bowls. And before that, because they were appreciative of everything. Mm -hmm. Then when you get to Super Bowls and you, you win them and you perform at a certain level, then it's almost like you spoil them. So it's like, Hey, I, I didn't play like an all pro this year, just like a pro bowl. Or yeah. I didn't play like the, the pro bowl year. I just had a, a very good, like great. He, he's one of the best players in the league still. And they're like, get rid of him. He's not, he's not an all pro. Get rid of him. It's like, well, you realize that there aren't a lot of all pros. <laughs> and now they not just, they, and you're not going to catch them in free agency. You're not going to catch it. Like, you, you don't just draft them. Like it, it's, it's crazy how people view that whole situation, but you know, uh, that that's part of it, I guess. Um, and, and they, they need to have, like you just said, have lower expectations in a sense of understanding that even though you're not going to Super Bowls, winning in the NFL is extremely hard. And to be consistently at the top, you know, top five, top 10 teams year in and year out, that's pretty impressive. And I'm not saying you need to, 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 um, you know, I'm not saying 
you, you shouldn't hope for greatness, but you got to also realize what you got as well. Right. Because then you, you're calling for firing of people after one losing season, firing, like fire, fire everybody, like reset. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and I don't think they truly understand what it was like before. I don't think they remember because it's been a decade of, of, of greatness. It's been a decade of, of winning of a culture change. And, and now they're like, get rid of Pete. Like we're tired of his, his predictable. We're tired of the, the, the gum chewing. We're tired of this. I said, well, guess what? If he leave. You're going to be tired of losing immediately. <laughs> and you ain't going to have nobody to blame, but yourself. So you're going to be sitting there like, I, well, I did say get rid of him. And it's kind of like the Niners fans right now with Jimmy G. And I can't say all of them because um, there have been some that have stayed consistent, but you have rarely ever seen a person get the kind of ridicule this man gets and still would be winning. And they're like, they're like, well, he hasn't thrown a lot of touchdowns. Well, he hasn't thrown the game away a lot. You talking about, they're like, well, well he threw a pick. He threw a pick. And I say, well, I remember a game reading about it. Cause I didn't watch it. I wasn't there, but they said Montana threw three against Dallas the year the catch happened. Yeah. 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 Through three. But you, but you forget about it because it's winning. He's legendary. He also threw 11 p- straight touchdowns without an interception. Has mm-hmm. never thrown an interception in, in the Super Bowl, et cetera, et cetera. But at some point, you got to appreciate. Because if you put the other guy in and he doesn't have this same level of success, you have nobody to blame but yourself. Yeah. No matter what he does, if he doesn't get to two NFC championships in three years, you have nobody to blame but yourself. And you got him on a discount. He is not one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the league. They're like, well, what about Bosa and them? The the cap is going up. They're going to get their money. Bosa's going to get his money. Debo's going to get his money. Like, guys are going to get paid. But then you're going to be sitting there, and if the quarterback plays well enough, guess what? All your talent's going to be gone soon. Mm -hmm. All your talent's going to be gone soon. As soon as he comes up for his money, good luck. Hope you can draft him again. Hope you can Mm -hmm. find another Bosa. Hope you can find another, another Debo. And I'll tell you like this. There ain't unicorns like that out there. Ain't too many of them out there. Ain't too, ain't too many, many of them out, out there. there. And you better hope you're not picking second again. Yeah. You're definitely yeah. not finding another Debo in the second round. Oh, no. No. So, Those are so it, at some point, the fans have to appreciate. Like, they were so mad in the early, early in the season, San Francisco fans. There were some people saying, Kyle was on the hot seat. Like, why did we sign him to a six year extension? Now we're stuck with him. Like, <laughs> stuck with him. <laughs> stuck with him. Y'all fired Kyle Shanahan there. It, it, it might be 31 other teams that, that hey, we, we might need to get rid of our head coach. Immediately. Uh, yeah. Immediately. Like, <laughs> hey, uh, hey, brother, our, coach, our coach is pretty good, but, uh, yeah, we might have to sign this guy back up. Look, brother, I know we made the playoffs, but uh, <laughs> but it was nice. It was cool. You know, Kyle's available. Let, you yeah. know, we just talking to him right now, but if he say yeah, we got to say no to you. I'm sorry. Uh, I hate to say sorry, it. Sorry, bud. <laughs> sorry, sorry to say it. But and that's that's the insanity of the National Football League. This oh. man went from hot seat from his own fan base to NFC championship, and they flipped the switch like that. They'd be like, I always knew it. Mm. I knew we were see, I was just it was just because I, I didn't understand why why we started so slow. It's like, no, either be committed and stay faithful. You can criticize, but you start calling people job. But see, but see, and then and then fans get mad at players for doing what's best for them and not what's best for the city or the team, right? It's because of stuff like that. Because ain't no loyalty. Just like you just said, them fans was talking about he on a hot seat. Now he in the NFC Championship game. Oh, we knew this. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we were we was riding with him. We knew all this stuff. But you flip flop. So as a player, as a, as a, as a player, I gotta do what's best for me because I know y'all gonna flip flop on me. Right. All it takes is for me to jump offsides on the third down in a pivotal game for y'all to say, hey, this guy needs to go. Y'all gonna forget about the other seventy sacks that I had. You know what I'm saying for the organization. So. As a player, I got to do what's best for me. And 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 P- and fans sometimes don't even understand that part. Like, they don't understand how flip-flop they might be on us to make us feel the way we feel. No, no question. I, they, Cliff, they cut me in the middle of an Achilles rehab. <laughs> I played yeah. through MCL, shoulder, knees, everything. Elbow, and they cut, everything. Yeah. They cut me in the middle of Achilles rehab, and then the fans still got the audacity to get mad that I went. They're like, I can't believe you signed to San Francisco. I can't believe you left. I didn't leave. I got fired. <laughs> Straight up. I got I the fact going you going I'm going somebody that want me. I'm going to somebody that want me. Y'all fired me, and not only did you fire me, you couldn't even do me the, the, the just of letting me rehab all the way. Like, let me get healthy. 
hey, you cut me healthy and we shake hands and part ways, we cool. Yeah. But to cut somebody in the middle, middle of Achilles rehab, you don't do that to your enemies. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do that to your enemies, Clifford. And, and okay. then the fans got the audacity to be like, you left. Like, you the enemy now. I said, y'all got the, like, like, and that's oh, where, right. that's not where you, paying attention. they're not paying attention. You, you're not paying attention and you have blindness. You have blindness. And that's why, why players don't feel loyalty. Like, like people are like, man, like, like they gave you a chance. They gave a lot of people a chance. You know what I mean? Players draft to Seattle Seahawks. Quite a few. Every single year. Every right. single year. They, they didn't draft me in the first round. They didn't yeah. draft me in the second round. Hey, yeah, he got me in the fifth. I gave them more than they bang, way more bang for their buck. Then oh for sure, but see and 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 again you know the notion of oh they gave you a chance, they they did they did choose me right and, and, and that's facts and I definitely wasn't a first round draft pick so it wasn't like they were banking on me it wasn't like they were investing that much in me because I've seen guys get drafted at my position that was gone that same year you know what I'm saying Come on now. so so like I had to work my tail off to stay in the situation like don't 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 play me as if it was a gift to me. Like it was a mutual partnership and it happened to work out because I worked my tail off to stay. Cause they're, they're quick to get rid of you. As you just said, after all pros, after, after super bowls, after everything, just like that, they'll get rid of you. So I got to do what's best for me because guess what? You're one play. And I'm literally, I know this for a fact, you're one play away from being out of the league. So you got to capitalize as fast as possible, as soon as possible. And you got to do what's best for you and your family because the NFL will have kickoff the, the second week of September every single year every for the next time. 100 years without you. Without you. That's best for you. Right. And the, and the organization will sign the next guy at your position. Now, will they go to another Super Bowl? Will they play the same way? Probably not. But you don't realize that until what you had it's is gone. gone. Yep, you don't, yep. You don't know what you got till it's gone. So what do you think about this college stuff? This college stuff has gotten wild, but I like it. <laughs> I like it. Uh, you talking about them getting paid? You all of it. The transfer portal, they're getting paid. It's free agency. I, 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 I love it. So it's, 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 it's twofold for me. I love mm -hmm. the fact that they're getting paid because I've been in that situation where I was broke as hell, mm -hmm. where, you know, I, I had to make, you know, my 20, 40, $50 a pale grant stretch. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I've been there. So I understand I had teammates that were going to, uh, they were going back to their dorms hungry, you know, and, and, and things like that. So I'm all for the guys getting paid. I'm all for the guys being able to monetize off their names, but it's such a, it's such a fine, it's a slippery slope because just like NFL guys, there has to be some financial literacy somewhere in there for them. You know what I mean? Cause most of, most of the guys that are getting paid come from, you know, uh, come from nothing. They're, they're sending money back home, uh, you know, all these different things. So I, I feel like, I don't know. I don't know if it's their do if they're, if, it, if it's their job to, because college really doesn't care about the players either, but they got to do something to help them with the financial literacy taxes, all these different things when it comes down to that. But I do have an issue, slight issue with the portal situation. And, and the reason I say that is because a part of becoming a pro, a part of, uh, uh, of being able to sustain, be, have a, a, a long career is the mental toughness, being able to stick through things, right. Being able to build those callous, you know, uh, of things not going your way, but being able to work your way through it. I think the portal is too easy of an out when things get hard and not being able to play through it. That's my only issue with the portal. Now I do think guys, there are situations where guys have to get up and go. You know what I mean? The coach told you flat out, Hey, you're not going to play. All right, cool. I'm out of here. You know what I mean? But I also understand that, if things go wrong and you're not getting as much playing time instead of transferring and or instead of sticking through and, and grinding it out to be able to earn that spot, you're going to just pick up and go to somewhere that's a little easier. I don't think those guys make it either. You know what I mean? So I don't know how you find the balance between it, but those are my issues with, with the portal in particular. Uh, it, it makes it a lot easier for guys just to be like, you know what? Ah, this ain't going to work out. I'm out of here. And you are totally right. And you are totally right. And that's, that's, you know, they're going to, we're going to sound so old, you know, this generation, you know, this generation, you know, <laughs> but that's <laughs> truly what it that, is. They, they're not built like that. Yeah. You know, a lot of these kids ain't built like that. They're not built to, to weather a storm. They're not built to, to weather through adversity and say, Hey, you know, maybe it's just not my time that I got to grind through it. Like, Hey, I got to battle this dude for the spot. Mm -hmm. These dudes don't want to battle for nothing. They don't want to wait. They don't want to take their time. They don't want to grow. They want it now. They, they, don't, they don't get it now. They get to leave. Yeah.
That's not, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's for sure. A problem. But the, what the, my only, and, and another problem I have with it is that it's hurting the high school kids. Oh yes. You're killing the high school kids. Now the high school kids, it's like, Oh, uh, we got to wait for scholarships to see if you get this transfer. And if you get this transfer, I don't got a scholarship, mm -hmm. but if you don't get the transfer, then, then you're going to call me. And now I got to, I get to go to college. Yeah. And it's like how many kids, and they're really not talking about the kids that's left in that middle ground that thought, Oh man, I'm about to transfer. I'm about to get out of here and go somewhere better. And they got left in no man's land and they, they didn't, mm -hmm. they didn't have nowhere to transfer. They end up going home. They don't get to go back to their school. They go home. And those kids are sitting there sick because they thought the grass was green around on the other side and end up on cement. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 so, so like making those types of decisions, I think for, for an 18, 19, 20 year old, you know, it's easy to say you're going to get up and go. And then, like you said, you know, if you're at a top university, you'll probably be able to downgrade and go to something, you know, uh, another university, but you will realize that that program is a lot different. You don't get as many gloves. You don't get as many cleats. You got to, Oh, you got to buy your own cleats. You got to buy your own pads. Like it's different. Right. So, so I, I like, that's my issue with the portal is it doesn't allow guys to stick through uh, and, 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 and build character through things not going their way. You know, right. the new generation, that's exactly what they expect. Things that go their way. If it's right. hard, if there's a little bit of pushback, you know what? I'm going to go to the opposite direction. But that's not that's not the process. The, the the great ones, they go through stuff. They go through stuff, and the ones that stick it through are the ones that end up being great. Those are the ones that play long in the NFL. Those are the ones that, that become Hall of Famers, are guys that can deal with, with uh, adversity but not let it break their stride and what their goals are. And Correct. the portal does not allow them to do that. Right. And, and, and then the thing I like about the, the, them getting money, um, in the NIL is that the, the exploitation of these kids has been going on far too long. Oh, I'm with and, and at this point, I don't care if it hurts college football. I don't care if it destroys the model. Um, like need it needed to be destroyed. You got, you got dudes sitting there, the NCAA, the head of the NCAA making a hundred million dollars or $50 million a year. And you know, these schools getting, 50, 60, 60, 70 million dollars. And it's like, okay, you sold this kid's jersey. But then when Terrell Pryor and those guys got tattoos and, and sold their stuff to get some benefits, it wasn't even like they they just got handed benefits. It was like, okay, I got rid of my stuff. I sold the ring. I sold the, the equipment, the jerseys, and I got some. You were ready to kill them. You, you They were persecuting them. The NCAA did that. Not the, It wasn't yeah. illegal for them to do that. Mm -hmm. NCAA persecuted those kids like they were criminals. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I have a, a huge issue if the NCAA doesn't pay for everything. I like, I, I tear it apart. Tear it down. I, I agree. I agree. Cause even, even, you know, when we, when we were going through uh, the, the ranks in, in college or whatever, you know, the first thing is like, Hey, you know, if, uh, if, if someone takes you out to dinner, you know, you can't, you can't take food. You can't go to dinner with said person because you know, they might be a donor or you can't do this. You can't do this. Like I'm broke. <laughs> I'm broke. And somebody's gonna offer to pay me to take me to a freaking Jimmy John's and I can't even do that. Like, what like what are we talking about right now? And you and you told my parents, you told my parents that I was gonna get taken care of while I was here. And I'm broke. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I I can't. And so somebody offers me that I can't, I can't, I can't take it, uh, partake in that. I find it to be uh hypocritical. And then, like you just said, right? The NCAA, but also I found it crazy that and all coaches aren't making this kind of money, but they're making a lot of money where a coach can be making three, four, five, nine million dollars, and yet you got some of your players on your team talking about some, they, they, they didn't get their meal that, that day, or they're going to sleep hungry, or they can't, like, that's crazy to me. That's crazy to me, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm all for players getting paid. I'm all for, for um, you know, guys being able to, everybody can make some money. I don't care if you're the third string quarterback. Everybody can, you know what, hey, uh, meal on us today. That's right. that, that goes a long way for college kids. Now everybody, and they only talk about the guys that's making millions of dollars now, but no, even the $250 that, that, that restaurant allows them to eat for free or whatever, like that goes a long way in college. And, and I, I think people are, are skipping that piece and it's only because they've never experienced it. it you know what I mean? It's because they've never experienced it. They were talking about the NCAA was amateur. They were like, what happened to amateurism? Like we want to keep, it was never amateurism. No, it has never been. I have, I probably put more hours in college than I did the league. 
on a per year basis. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because they got you for the summer. They got you for the spring. You got me tackling and stuff in the spring. Yeah, you got me running that. like every day. You got me. How living. about winter workouts? <laughs> We're not talking about 6 a.m. in the morning where you're telling me I got a class at eight and yeah. you mad because I'm going to sleep. Well, it, I, I just ran myself into the ground. Yeah. You think yeah. I'm activated now? No, I'm tired. And then, and then, and then some people are like, oh, well, what about the education? And, and I get people on this all the time. It's like, okay, realistically, Cause I, so I went to Purdue, I went to Purdue, um, uh, my first, my, my first semester, I went to Purdue thinking I was going to be an electrical engineer or aviation actually. Right. All right. Aspirations. That, that, yeah, yeah, ex exactly. They, 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 they told me, Hey, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You, you, you can definitely get your degree in that no question. bro. within the first semester, they start talking about these labs. They start talking about these classes that I gotta take. People don't realize for athletes, you got to block on your schedule. You can't have class past a certain time, whether that's two o'clock, two 30 from, from six o'clock or seven o'clock, whatever that time block was. But for most students, that's when those labs and, and those work, those workshops and all those different things are happening and you can't even take those classes. So my first semester, I like, it, like they, they told me, Hey, look, we understand that you, you know you want this degree, but like if you want to stay here, you probably yeah, you probably should look into a different degree. That's what they tell ninety percent of us. You know what I'm saying? And then people are like, oh well, such and such got an engineering degree. Is like I bet you his freshman year he probably wasn't in that class. It's it's not until he probably became that guy that they were like, you know what, we'll make an exception for him. Right. You know what I'm saying? He but overcame. besides that, yeah. But like so. People are saying it's like most guys aren't getting great degrees per se. You know what I mean? It's going to be something in sociology. It's going to be, uh, we had something called OLS, organizational leadership skills. That's what most of the guys were graduating in. You know what I'm saying? And at that time I was like, I don't even know what that means. So no, I'm a, <laughs> I'll take another class that will help me, you know, get to where I want to go. But so, so that, that notion of saying, Oh, you're on scholarship, you're getting an education and all this other stuff is like, Guys aren't getting great, great degrees like that. Guys aren't being engineers. Guys aren't becoming doctors. Guys are like, you're coming out of college with a degree that's still going to, you know, you're still going to be at the bottom of the totem pole. So y'all can miss me with that. Let these guys get paid. Um, and, and class is a part of it. And we'll go through it from, from that perspective. Because that name on, my, on the back of my jersey, y'all have made millions of, hell, I go to Purdue right now. And I'm, I'm still, they still got stuff of me on there. You know what I'm saying? You get a little <laughs> like, bit of change from it now. You get a little bit of something. No, nah, they ain't getting nothing. Well, yeah, they get a little bit, but yeah, yeah. Well, they go to the PA and they write you a little check. Yeah, yeah, uh, low percentage. You know <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I think, I think the argument is, but again, if you haven't experienced it, it's hard for you to understand it. But you have to be able to at least think and listen to the folks that have experienced it to 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 actually form a, a real opinion of it instead of listening to the media. Right, and they 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 don't want to listen to it because because when people think of athletes, they think of privilege. They think of Oh, they have what I don't have. Mm -hmm. You have this. Oh, y'all got, got tutors. I, 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 I took out loans to go to school. You know, so they I know, can't feel sorry. You done that. You, you, you're right. Like, yeah, it, yeah. I wouldn't have gone to school if it wasn't yeah. for this. I would have been in the workforce. I, I, I wouldn't have had the luxury of going to college because I couldn't pay, pay back no loan. Man. I just went into the workforce. I feel you. But no, it's interesting. It's, it's a really interesting space. And I'm happy these kids are getting paid. I'm happy that it's happening that way. Um, you know, I, you know, I put them away for my kids to go to college. If they get a scholarship, they're going to have quite a low nest egg for them. But at this day and age, it's, you know, whatever allows these kids to be successful, whatever allows these kids to benefit the most, if it's money, if it's, if it's more time, because like you said, it's blocked off. So you're limited on what you can take. You're limited on what you can execute. Even if you're like, Hey, it's outside of my, cause Meetings start at two, practice ends at seven. So even if it's like an 830 class, you likely aren't going to take it because, no. because I'm going to be tired. I'm too tired. Like too I tired. need to go to sleep. And I got to be up early in the morning. And I got to be up early to try to get to this other class that mm -hmm. I'm too tired and too beat up to take. But well, I appreciate you, Clifford. I appreciate you getting on here with me and, and shooting uh -huh. it. I, I probably took up it, more of your time. It's well, first off, what up before we get off of here, it took too long for you to invite me on here, first and foremost, just, just throwing that out there. Um, you know, you guys, I've been, I've been keeping up. I be, I, I know what Sherm got going on, you know, and, and I'm like, Oh, well, maybe, maybe I didn't get enough sacks for him or something. I don't, I don't know. I, 
I don't know. I, I feel like we won a championship together and, and, and dang, he can't, he can't, I can't get on the show. I can't get on the podcast. Like what's it? But I appreciate, I appreciate you having me, man. It's, it's always a pleasure. Um, you know, obviously we talk quite often and, and I appreciate you, uh, you know, just our conversation and, and everything that we talk about, man. It's, it's big, way, way, way deeper than sports for us. Right, and and right, that's right, dope. Right. right. And, and, and Clifford, I didn't want to, I didn't want to bring you on on no trivial regular season games. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. Championship okay. week. I'll take that. I'll take that. You know what I mean? All the eyes. There's only four teams left. You know what I mean? I didn't want to bring you in nothing that wasn't up to your standard. You know, I, what I, mean? I, I, you know what? I feel you. I, I, I respect that. I'll take. I'll take that. Uh, that excuse for why it took so long. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate you, my bro. man. I appreciate yes, you. Let's get to the lunch this week or something. Let's make it happen, bro.